Savage. What's going on, Savages? How are we? Welcome to another episode of the Savage Snowflake Podcast with me, Jeff Leach, your friend, your closest confidant, your teacher, your student, your lover, your mother, your breastfeeding wench, the old man at the, the, the weird cottage on the corner of your village that no one ever really talks to. And they say, stay away from that man. He's dangerous. But not in like a pedophile way, in more like a, a wizard kind of way. And then one day you and your friends come down and I'm there and I'm all old and I'm like, hey, what's up there, Shani? And you're like, not much, just trying to find some adventure. I'm like, well, take these beans and plant them in your back garden. And you do, and a big fucking vine grows out your floor and you go out there, you have an adventure. That guy, I could be that guy for you as well. I like these little improvisations. You can always tell the episodes where I'm high as balls, ladies and gentlemen, because I always start with an improvisation. Thank you very much to all of you who are tuning in day in, day out, twice a week, every single fucking week, giving you that good savagery of the snowflake variety. Uh, and thank you very much if you've stepped up to actually support the podcast. I rely on this. Um, I, 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 we, I hate the begs. I hate the begs because begging is, never really gets you the results you want. But I would be internally grateful if some of the regular listeners, and I know there's um, you know a few thousand of you who tune into every episode at least, and uh, it'd be great if a few of you went across to patreon.com slash savage snowflake. The description is in the, uh, you can find the link in the description of this episode and, and donate a little something. One dollar a month. You can do one buck a month or five or 10 or 50 or a million. And if you give me a million a month, I'll suck your D. And uh, or kiss your V, whatever you need me to do, I'm there. Um, also, thank you very much to our sponsors, Manscaped.com, refining the gentleman, giving you that incredible technology to trim down your body hair, maybe keep your balls nice and smooth, get the shaft clean, gentlemen. She doesn't want it dirty. She doesn't. She hates the musk that you give off. Uh, you need to wash a little bit clearer. Maybe get some ball wipes from them too while you're at it. If you use code SAVAGE at their website, Manscaped.com, you get 20% off their items. You'll get a free leather travel bag and free shipping on every order. And also, Boundless Technology, the finest purveyors of vaping technology. If, like me, you like to smoke that herb and that sweet distillate, that resin, mm, 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 give me all them sweet legal drugs in this state of California. If you want to enjoy those, you should do it with Boundless Technology, bndlstech.com. There you can see all of their wonderful pieces there. Uh, they have got some incredible tech. It lasts for fucking days at a time. I never have to charge the batteries. They're incredible for that. Uh, and also very easy to clean. You can take apart every part of their machinery, which is pretty cool. Um, if you go to boundlesstech.com, bndlstech.com, and use code SAVAGE, you'll get 25% off every order. All right. Good reads, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. Thanks very much, Jeff. Joining me today, and in like po being very positive and supportive, you were giving me like all the facial features, yeah. all the yes. responses to my speech, and I bounced off it, and I was very grateful for it. I'm surprised you're a wizard and you didn't tell me. Well, there you go, it's man. In, in another dimension, I am an old wizard. Wow. Aren't we all, in some way or another? Well, like, you have just crystal ball. A crystal ball, and in you're, it. You're like, predicting Whoa. whose V or D you're going to kiss. I could be an old, an old soothsayer, yeah, because I'm Romanian as well. Oh, Ooh. let me look to your future. Right. right. And I look in the balls. I'm not fucking balls. with you. Can I curse? <laughs> Is it too late? <laughs> you can curse. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, I should introduce you first, though. Yeah. It's uh, uh, actor Please do. and comedian, Nikki Paris. You've done a bit of acting now, haven't you? Um, mostly comedy, but I do act when I'm forced to. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Acting like you're like me. I love you. This guy, this guy I'm actually this like... This guy. Very smart. You know, I just, when you actually was when listening to you talk, you're like, you speak the lyrics of Alanis Morissette. <laughs> Has anyone ever That's told funny. you that? Like, you're just a jagged little pill. Traffic. Jam. Yeah. When you're already late. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you mean to me so that's why I'm here today to like, you know, know that. ironic yeah isn't it don't you think don't you, yeah don't you think oh it's like rain you ought to know on your wedding day you ought to know so the good advice <laughs> when you're already late yes yeah. it's like the good advice that you just couldn't take and who would have thought that, that you know it figures I'm not sure the fun place. I was going to do the whole song. Maybe. I was just going to play the triangle. I, I just wanted to attribute something. I forgot my harmonica home. But are you a multifaceted performer? Are you uh, are you a triple threat? Can you sing? Um, Have you got I that Matteo Lane gay pipes? Or I not? love Matteo, and I know he sings. Um, I definitely started a musical theater, and I took opera lessons when Fuck I was a little yeah, kid. Right. But I definitely I could carry a tune. But would I be like, you know, that's like. Being like I'm a break dancer, okay. like I could do a couple moves. Yeah, but what I'd be like, oh, I can backflip, but I don't know if I can fucking right. headspin. I don't need to end up on a stretcher. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm yeah, just yeah, play yeah. it under. But comedy is definitely like my favorite thing to do. But I could sing and I can act. Um, but nice. Not a dancer. I'm not like the whitest. I have no rhythm. 
and I'm, I'm very self-conscious when I go to clubs and like I go out and maybe like try to meet somebody because I'm not a good dancer so I like do the awkward pace I look you know like, what helped with that what? Well, actually, uh, drugs Real, no, yeah, so I could be foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Fault, really? Nah, just like Molly. Molly will definitely help you. You'll dance a lot more loose. Are you confident when you go out? Just like you just I mean, have I'm all different. When moves. I'm taking Molly, yeah, I guess like I've done Molly, and let me tell you, it's not been a great experience. Oh, I haven't done actually class A's for many, many years. But yeah, I, when same. I did take Molly, I was, I was, if even if I wasn't a good dancer, I thought I was. You know, <laughs> it's like there's a lot, of, lot of good confidence comes out of but then you see somebody else uh, dabby dab like the electric daisy carnival and you see somebody who like thinks that they're like beyonce yeah and they look like and they got like a cock and bulls hanging out the side of their shorts hanging out and they're like drooling at the mouth and a bit of puke on the front of their shirt i feel that blew somebody in the porta potty ah god just got stuck in the memories the memories don't get me don't make me tear up well i mean she will because she's gonna get pink eye yeah you know chlamydia of the eye yeah can you get that or is it gonorrhea of the eye um Oh God! I mean, let me call my doctor. <laughs> herpes, you get that. You get herpes of the of the genitals in the mouth. Ooh. But I, I don't think a, it's more a sty, isn't it? Like pink eye. That's not herpes of the eye, or I mean, herpes. It's not herpes at all. But I don't think it's gonorrhea of the eye or anything like that. It's 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 a diff- it's just a it's a, an irritation. Which Something is to be afraid isn't that of, what jizz is generally from men for uh, women at least? It's mostly an irritation. Ugh. Oh, is it going to get me pregnant or go on my face? Neither of these Both options are, are horrible. good. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, is it nicer for a man as a gay man? Do you ever no. just be like, no? Nah. I'm so boring in the bedroom. Not a fan. I'm of not. I'm, I'm not a sexual person. Okay. I think somebody really messed me up somewhere along the line. I don't know where. Um, but you and my mum would have gotten like a house on fire. Really? She's very asexual. She's not yeah. interested in sex. Like she's not really into it. Could we get care. her on the horn? <laughs> oh man, I wish. We could. We could try. But she, um, what my mum always needed was not to be married to my dad because they divorced after like fucking God knows how many years and they should have done yeah. it 20 years earlier. But she needed, she's very into theatre, very into music, very into opera and art and classical music and stuff. What she needed was, and but she didn't want to fuck a man. She didn't want sex. She didn't really care about sex. But she wanted that companionship. And I always said to her, what you needed was a wonderful gay man who wasn't interested in sex right. either. They'd be like a real married couple. They'd fucking love each other's company. See, I think there's a difference, difference between love and lust. Because I think if you really love somebody, like I'm going to ram your head into the wall at the Hilton. <laughs> like when you really like you want to protect them. Like I just feel like there's like a separation. I feel like there's somebody for love and then there's somebody for sex. Okay. I think. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just like if I really love for somebody, like I would never think of like just ramming their head into my headboard. Like really? Just, yeah. Isn't that weird? I just that's I don't not know. weird. No. And I don't like being vulnerable. You have those two things quite as two separate worlds. Yeah. Then. Okay. That's interesting because I find it. Um, I personally am find it very easy to separate sex from the love I feel for someone. I can separate those two things. So I, I'm capable of fucking attractive people and not giving a solitary fuck about them and being in love with a woman, but still wanting to fuck beautiful girls. Like I, I can do that. Now, is there a safe word when you enter that zone? Oh, no, but I don't do I do not do that. Because oh. most women are not happy with that situation. Okay. And the girl I'm currently dating, I don't think she'd like me to just go and fuck random people. No, so I wouldn't no, do no, it. No, no. I don't want to make her upset. That would make me feel... Yeah. No, I was talking about you switching it on in the bedroom and being like, yeah, but really giving it to someone. Yeah, but what I can do is I don't, it doesn't mean that even though I can separate sexual, the sexual act and that need to just from being in love with someone, I can also understand the different type of sex that I have with the woman I'm in love with. Because it is, sometimes it is fucking pick her up and fuck her against the wall and knock everything off and handcuff her and throat fuck her and all that. And then sometimes it is just that really lazy, beautiful Sunday morning snuggling and you're fucking on the big spoon and you get in there and you start fucking, yeah. you know, when she's in front, she's right. like arching her back. Boom. Do you brush your teeth first? Sometimes we don't. Wow. That's how like comfortable we are. I'm disappointed to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy that I was dating that always did that and I was like, go fucking brush your mouth, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I smell the fucking Brush taco bell that you with had. my dick. Yeah. Am I right? Those are the next words. <laughs> were you there? Were you listening? I, I was that guy. You've forgotten the, already. Oh, fuck, Jeff, we weren't going to talk about that today. Dude, that's why I've been chewing gum all afternoon in preparation really? for this. Ugh, Jeff, just give me some space. <laughs> just, I'm a person just like you. Do you, are you, um, are you privy to this uh, online f- drama fiasco between James Charles oh, and no. Tatiana, whatever the fuck, Westbrook is it? And, um... Jeffrey Star got involved at the end of it, but as a as a gay man, I don't really want to get into their fucking bullshit YouTube drama because who cares? And none of my listeners are eleven. However, <laughs> I do want to ask you: 
one of the things James Charles talked about in this and on what he was accused of was being a, a gay man who preys on turning, trying to turn straight men or trying to find straight men who are with women and get them a little drunk or suggest them they should cheat on their girlfriends with him, blah, 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 by using his status and his fame. Now, my personal opinion is that that's bullshit. He's not pre pre uh, preying on anyone because if a dude has the inclination to go after, to, to be susceptible to a gay man going, hey, baby, maybe you should suck my famous dick. If a guy ever gets to the point where he goes, I guess I could try it, then he's definitely bi curious or he's right. definitely fucking curious. Right. I am very open sexually, but if the hottest, most powerful gay man in the world offered me fame, fortune, and blah, 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 that's to, why just to suck his dick. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I came here You are here not today. nearly successful enough yet, <gasps> Nikki Paris. No, don't take offense to I'm it. I'm leaving. But it's, you, you, come on. Fine, Jeff. When you I come know. back with your own fucking, okay. you know, your own uh, three seasons deep, you know, ses I'm going to uh, call series, the gay clan. Which actually, it, wish I was going to say, it may, it may happen sooner than we think, but when that happens, that's when I'll suck a dick. But the deal is like, I would never be susceptible to it because I'm just not sexually stimulated by yeah, men. Yeah, of course. But, I don't know, man. He, they were acting like he was a piece of shit. I'm like, nah. He's just going like, I've gay men flirt with me, and I like the flirt. It's fun. It's nice. It's always nice to be attention. And <laughs> but vice versa, it's like me flirting with a girl who's not interested. I might right. flirt and try, but if she's like makes it clear, yo, not interested in that with you. Blah 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 blah. I got a boyfriend. I'm not into you. Whatever it is, then I find it very easy to go. Okay, no stress. Cool. Let's I think that, I don't know the whole situation with him. I feel like it's kind of just like I hate to say manipulated because how do you is, lose yeah. three million YouTube subscribers in like a week and then days, gain them yeah. back a week later? Mm -hmm. He gained back like two million followers. So I think yeah. like the media is all in cahoots. I love that Jeffrey Star just feels the need to jump in his pink car, just drives around with his ear to the ground. He's like, it's like the police radio, yeah. and just like, when should I jump in? Which is you know why they work so well because it's the only part of his body that's still his. Is his ears. <laughs> So he can actually, uh, he can hear incredibly well. You know when all the other senses are dumbed yeah. and dulled? Yeah. You get really right. precision. So you're saying he just, probably heard this conversation right now. So he could like hear NASA yeah. radio waves. I kind of like Jeffree Star actually. Well, I don't think I answered your question though about what, what were you going to say about him? My question was going to be is that, is that do you think, uh, A, is it, is it, is it honestly that exciting or attractive for gay men to, to pursue straight men and go, could I turn him? And B... Um, I don't. Is there anything wrong with that? Because like, I think if a guy is susceptible to it, then he was always susceptible to maybe licking the tip of a dick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know when you became Gail King. Like I wasn't prepared for these. I thought we we're gonna talk about snowflakes and maybe just skiing. No, it's coming I up. definitely coming have up. had a few experiences with like some straight men. Like not even gonna. Are lie. they straight? Um, or were they always a little curious? Are they bi curious and they're probably just too intimidated to come out because the guys in their hometown of Wisconsin would beat the shit out of them or call them a fag and like go after them? You know what I mean? And like bully them. I can't say. I can't do any. I can't give any details. But what I will say is that say I think that opinion. I've never would pressure somebody into doing something. Of like not. I've definitely like felt vibes, but like I would never like according to what Twitter was saying, like he was like sending like making like the first move like oh you should suck my dick and like stuff like that like i feel and like even, that's a different even that thing. even that that's invasive even that but but even that if a guy says to me yeah, maybe you should suck my dick i go nah i'm good bro and then just like block him now i understand that i think this is where we come to sort of like and uh, god i don't want to go down this i go down this path a lot i think it's because it's such a prevalent conversation but i don't want to go too deep into the gender divides etc cetera, etc cetera. but there is an element that when a guy when a woman says to me something sexual, overtly sexual, that I didn't ask for her to, I didn't give her any inclination to do that, which happens a lot. Women send me fucking photos or messages like, oh God, yeah, and, I, and I, if the roles are reversed or the genders are reversed, it might be like a big thing. Um, right. But it's because I don't feel any physical threat from them. No girl's going to pin me down. Like maybe some Russian kickbox chick somewhere. <laughs> She's going to beat fucking, the shit out of yeah, you. Yeah, could like knock me the fuck out and Roundhouse rape me. kick you in. But, for the most Fish part, you. yeah, but for the most part, a woman's not going to overpower me. Yeah. So I always have that in the back of my, I've always got that if I need it. Yeah. Whereas with women, when men say very aggressive sexual things to them out of turn, rather than just being able to brush up and go, go fuck yourself. I'm cool. They might be like worried that, hey, if I say that to this guy, he might flip on me and pin me against the fucking wall and harm me. There's that fear, that physical fear. I just feel like my fear is like we live in the age of screenshots. Yeah. So like anybody could see anything 
that you sound like. I don't feel safe like sending anybody anything truthfully. It, like freaks me oh, out. Okay. Like, have you ever had like a, your dick pic gotten out? On what? On anything. Oh, well, because- so there's already a picture of my cock at a fashion show that I did for a friend who was a hat designer. And it was actually a late, I wore a woman's hat on a catwalk show in London and nothing else. And that's when you did the big reveal. Well, I just, I just didn't care. I was like, I like, I don't care about my body being yeah. out. And um, it looks all right. My dick looks, you know, it's nice and long and thick enough for, and it's completely flaccid and it looks great. Um, but then, you know, I don't care about, like I'll do a film one day where my cock will be out, guaranteed. And like, yeah, great. I'm kind of happy about that. Sure. That's beautiful. I hope it happens whilst I've got a really nice body. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I think it's just going to help you. I think it's going to be more people that will <laughs> buy tickets to see you. I'd like to, yeah, my gay community following. If you're listening, definitely. Google, he said long and girthy gays, all right? Yeah, not gigantic. Take off the pink beats and not, get on Not, not gigantic, but bear in mind I'm six foot four. So when yeah. you look at the length of the penis on the body, I'm six foot four. It's almost two meters tall. And it's, it's pretty nice flaccid. So imagine what happens when it grows. Having sex with you seems like it'd be not great. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, no, I'm gentle. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like you're yeah. like the big, tall, green giant. No, no, no. And I'm also, I, look, listen, let me, let me not, let me cast any aspersions aside. Mm-hmm. I do not have a gargantuan dick. Okay. It's nine inches erect. But that's a decent <laughs> length of dick. Yeah. That's double. That's a hearty some, dose of dick. Yeah there's, yeah, there's countries where the national average is half of that dick. I could fold my dick in half. And still have guys in the toilets going like, oh, pretty big dick, bro. I don't know where they're from. It's like, like, Is that how you spend your weekends? No, but I feel like... Hanging out in fucking toilets at the urinals, just fucking slapping it. But I can't picture you like die. fitting in a bed. Like, <laughs> I feel like probably like hang off the bed. I mean, if what? Sorry, say that again. I feel like because you're, you're so tall, like it yeah. would be uncomfortable. My be- penis? No, no, your body. We're not talking about your penis anymore. I'm sorry to disappoint oh, you. Okay. I'm saying that like if somebody was to have sex with you, I feel like you're so tall what size are the blankets because I feel like your feet are probably I have, hanging I have off. a California king in there and that's in- with some beautiful blankets one that's like on top it's all velvety and then underneath oh. it's like this soft like Murano wool or whatever it's fucking you want to rub your dick on it it's oh. like beautiful that's how you lure them in. That's how I get them in. I go, look at the blanket. The blanket. The blanket. And then I throw the blanket oh. over them and I carry them in. Right. But then I go, do I have your consent? And they'll go like, a bit late. And I'm like, uh. You're you like, not with the pencil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign it in pen. And then um, and then someone takes that comment out of context. Yeah. Cuts right. into it. Like we were talking about before. PSA, yeah. And then yeah. you have to have a whole PR plan. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you become a comic? Um... I wanted to be Britney Spears growing up, and then I realized I had a muffin top, and I couldn't sing that well, so I had to let that dream die. I mean, kinda... she's had more than her fair share of muffin tops, mate, first of all. I know, but she's... And she's... have you heard her sing lately? She's a deep fried angel, so don't don't you <laughs> fucking dare. Don't you Okay, she's on her 5150 dare. right now. The people are rallying outside the courthouse. They're going to stab you. They're hearing you on the roof. Yeah. Jeffree Star is going to send them. He's listening yeah, to the radio he is. waves of this. He's on the fucking... So... She's like... Britney's like... Get on the scanners, bitch. Yeah. And the scanners is just Jeffree Star's yeah. ears. Just pro- like they, right. they expand out. And beep, beep. Yeah. Beep, beep. Kill Jeff beep, Leach. Beep, beep. And it just <laughs> That's, broadcasts yeah. out. Yeah. No, I, I totally am into the... Brit. Not that you asked that, but I'll let you know. Like, I will pay money. Just like the gay fans will pay money. I, I bought a ticket to see Britney Spears in Vegas and she yawned. And I was fine with that. She yawned? Yeah. I said, go sit one out. Skip a couple songs. I don't care. I res- I love her that much. <laughs> I'm like, do you want to take a break? Like, we'll sit. Yeah, we can I don't sit care. Down and sit down, just chill out. She yeah. yawned. Yeah, she definitely yawned. Fine with me. I was like, go take she a break. She didn't even turn around to no. pull the yawn. Like, Somebody get her grits or biscuits or she something. Just some, let her get get some carbs. Yeah. She needs carb alone. Yeah, quick. just let her lay down for a little bit. Get some pre workout. But yeah, I've always been a performer, and I started doing stand up when I was 17, and I was I was on a cruise ship. And um, how do you now? 26. 26. All right, nine years in. Yeah. So you've been doing comedy longer than me. Really? Yeah. I started eight years ago. Wow. I took like six months off like the first year I started because I I don't know, I couldn't get booked and then I, I met Gladys Simon who's a big New York City comedy nice. legend and then I took started you under your wing, under took there. me under her wing, she yeah. scissored me and now I'm a comedy <laughs> star. No, but <laughs> I <laughs> doing it. But yeah, I was on I I was on a, I, everyone in my whole life was like you should be a comedian, you should be a comedian. I was like I don't really want to be that. Like yeah. I thought would just think of like a big blazer jacket and jeans and like New Balance sneakers. Yeah, and I was exactly. like, "Hey, what's the deal yeah, with what's, I, Yeah, exactly. So um 
I think like once I discovered like Joan Rivers and you know Richard Pryor and all these different people, it kind of was like, wow, comedy is actually really cool. Yeah. And I had nothing prepared the first time I went up, and I just made fun of people in the crowd. Riffed it. I made I fun of my everybody. First show. Yeah. And where I was, was your wait? Describe your first show then. So it was you, on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. In front oh, of you like were on a cruise people. on yeah. a holiday, mm-hmm. and then someone went, "Get out there! Get out yeah, there!" Yeah, my friends were like, "You have to go up there," and I was like, "No, like I'm good." And what happened? The they were like, MC were like, "Yeah, come on." They were like, "He has to go up," and I just I went up and I just made fun of everyone in the crowd. I said, "You know, I was talking about people. Somebody at the cruise. Did ship- you? If you look back on it now with objective eyes." Did you bomb? Did you do well? Did no, I did do, great. Okay. It's on YouTube. I have a video of it. Really? Yeah, it was very impressive. I, I, was, I would <laughs> say, I'm very critical, so oh. I, I would say that. Yeah, it was very... That's wonderful. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it now. I'm going to pick that shit apart. Really? I, I, I'm going to review your video. Sam, and I'm going to review your dick dress pic. Okay, <laughs> so... Touche, bitch. Shit. I tell you what, yours is going to be a short review than mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. A little confident. No, that was actually self-deprecating. Oh. I was, I was alluding to the fact that I have a small penis, so it'd have to be a short. I just review. get lost in your words. You sound like Thank how you. pizza tastes. Thanks. Thanks. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you. So no, yeah, that was pizza. my stand-up story. That's that was amazing. my big intro. That's good. Well, congratulations. I mine was the complete opposite. I actually I had a good show, but I, I was doing a TV show, shooting a TV show called I think Big Brother's Big Mouth at the time in the UK. The show that Russell Brand used to do before he wow. launched into movies and that, and um. I, uh, my friend who was a, a comic, I used to do some improv actually with an improv group and we were doing a show and my friend, she said, oh, do you do stand up? And I was like, I don't actually, but I was having problems with the improv group. They were kind of dicks and they were very, uh, they were Cambridge. They were both Cambridge guys. So they were very like, not the crackers, right? Up and stuff. No, like Cambridge university. Oh, boring. Yeah. Like the, like the Monty <laughs> Python crew. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So they thought they were the, the best thing ever and so clever and all our all our comedy has to be so esoteric. I'm like, f- people. most people don't know what esoteric means, motherfuckers. Like, stop like trying to make it high, you know, high brow. Just make it funny. Anyway, long story short, she goes, come and do stand-up and you can do my club. And I had a TV career. So I like loads of people turned up for the show in this little pub in Camden at the top of the pub. And it was packed into this little room. And uh, I asked her how long I could do. And she was like, she was like, we'll do like, you can do like 10, 15 minutes. So my first show was like going to be 15 minutes long. Wow. I took an ecstasy tablet. My friend turned up, Remy, who was like a big dealer in Bristol. And he came down and he happened to be in London that weekend. He was like, I'm going to come out to your show, mate. I saw you advertising it. I was like, oh, wow. On MySpace. That's how long ago this was. And so he came to the show and we had whiskeys. And he gave me, he goes, you want a little, you want a, you want a little one? I was like, yeah. So I took an ecstasy tablet. And then I went on stage. By the time I went on stage... Headed yourself? Like- by the time I went on stage, I was fucking flying. Oh, God. And I did 40 minutes on stage. And I, my ex-girlfriend at the time... My girlfriend at the time filmed it. And I somewhere... that I had the I had the video somewhere. I, th- I hope it got deleted by now because I bet I'd cringe. But it was really funny. I ended up doing like 20 solid minutes on my Nigerian... Uh, shyster fucking housemate, Ty Ogidan. He had diplomatic immunity. He was a lunatic. Cokehead fucking just nut job. And I did 20 minutes just about him. How did and he the audience were loving it. He was cracking up. He was just like, he loved it. Aha, legend, stop it. And so they were literally getting to see, oh, he is that fucking nuts. Wow. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good, it was a fun show. What an experience. But I think it defined my first three years of comedy. Now, how did it feel to go back into that sober? Like was it? Were you like nervous? Wait, like, oh my god! Am I? How have you started becoming the interviewer? What's happening? I am curious, Jeff. What? I th- I'm flipping the tables. Someone give him a T show, a T show, a TV show. Jeff, give him a TV show. No, I'm this serious. guy should host his own TV show. Wink. I'm winking because that might be happening soon. Jeff, but you know what? what I was talking about NDAs, right? NDA. So when you did <laughs> when you did stand up for the second time sober, what was the challenges of doing that? Um, no, I was all right. I always had stage confidence. I yeah. think if you can improvise and you if move you, very well. Thank you. You're welcome. Man. I think if you're if you're if you have um, stage presence, if you're an actor and you've done stage work, you should be able to. That should um, cure you of any fears of one aspect of the job just being on stage in front of a room full of people. If you have improvisational skills, you should also be doubly confident because whatever happens, you could effectively... I feel very confident, very confident that I could perform a one-hour show without any scripted material and just do crowd work, 
silly shit. I'd find props backstage. Just I could riff for an hour. I could do a, a Robin Williams esque, an homage to Robin Williams. And I'm not claiming that I'm Robin Williams or of that talent, but I'm saying that's why I'd probably go with it. Off the wall for an hour. I'm going to nominate you for a Tony. Oh, th- that's going to be my contribution to this Thank project. You. For your consideration, Jeff You're Leach welcome. could do a one hour show. Yeah. That's welcome. what my special is going to be called. I could have done a one hour <laughs> improvised show without any material, but management said that was a bad idea. Yeah. So I wrote this. Right. The special. Yeah. I think it has a poetic ring to it. Yeah, it's long. It's yeah. a long title, but yeah. you know what? Be different. Yeah. Be different. Catchy. Right, exactly. Put on a t shirt or fill the whole Imagine thing. Imagine the hashtag, trying to write that hashtag out to promote it. It'd be like a numerical code. Yeah, I don't think even it fits. No, it doesn't. Something that you're not something you're used to apparently. What well, not fitting. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you about England. Um, when I went on a trip a couple of years ago, I went to Anne Hathaway's cottage and I was thought I was under the impression it was Anne Hathaway from the Princess Diaries and it was Shakespeare's wife. And I have a problem with you and your people that I'd like you to take back. Up you the thought it was a Hollywood actress, but it turned I, yeah. out to be a part of fucking history. Yes. I said, where's Julie Andrews? Yeah. Hundreds I, and hundreds of years yeah. ago. I said, where's Julie Andrews? When I got there, I was very disappointed. And they're like, this place is 400 years old. And you're like, yeah, but I really just, uh, she's got such great skin. Her complexion is amazing. I saw her it? there. I she's think she's like someone like she bathes in powdered <laughs> baby milk. I thought she was in the they costume the from Les Miserables. However you say it, that she was just in there sweeping with Les a broom. Mis, yeah. yeah. Les right. Miserables. Le, yeah, right. I'm Les American. Miserables. Wait, D- what's ditto. Their, what are their songs, wait? On my own. Do you On know? Do, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. I don't know. I don't know. I just know on my own. And the what big. are the other ones? I know on my own. The hills are alive. That's the sound of music. I'm leaving. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the sound down, of music. Down, 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 and out. Down, 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 and out. While well, you know you got to know. Never did it. Never did it. If I didn't. Down, 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 down. Okay, so I'm taking Bugsy back Malone, the Tony nomination. Bugsy Malone. Did you hear that pitch, though? Pitch perfect. Yeah. Who's I? Yeah, I think that was before my time. Give me back, Tony. <laughs> Give it back. Okay, fine. All right, thank you. I'll put You're it, welcome. I'm here, put it here. here you go. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, I got two now. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. Have you ever been to the UK? Yeah, you have. Yeah, just what? once. I yeah. What were you there for? Comedy? No, I went for a trip with my high school. Nice. And I saw. I went to the Globe Theater and I saw The Lion King, which was not great. And you didn't enjoy it? No, I don't like The Lion King. It's too much. I enjoyed it. When they I went make to it feel it. like you're actually in Africa. And yeah. I left with West Nile virus. I liked the Disney version. It was a lot more. And you were like too many black people. No, it was just too. A little bit the of racism. elephants little that bit were racism. running through the aisles. It, it was, was a little. Much. Be honest. It was a bit of racism. You were like when I, what I just said. Yeah, when it was, no. no, when you were like no, when he when you said it was like it was too. It was like you were in Africa. Yeah, it was surrounded just, by. Well, like it was also, they also didn't put the air conditioning on. You were scared. It was 150 degrees. It's, it, look, it's all right if you need to come clean about your horrendous racism. Now's the place to talk about it. We Shut up, Jeff. Out. Listen, I yeah. went to I get it. Um, Look, you're, the you're, Globe. You're handsome. You're possibly Middle Eastern or some shit. I don't know. I'm Italian. Know. Italian. You're something. You're foreign. You got a bit of something going on. And you're gay. You're already ticking enough boxes. It's okay that you're a little racist. I'm not racist. I had a black boyfriend. <sighs> Trying. Well, white girl really kicking in there. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I will take. That I did. I was in college. Beautiful, thick dick. Just to pay reparations. Yeah, that's why I did it. All those years of crying into the pillow. I feel like there's. I feel like I mean I feel like there's there's a number of gay men who would be like, okay. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not racist. I come from a family. I'm, joking, a I'm, little, I'm glad you're not. Yeah. I'm glad you've confirmed. Well, I come it. from like a very I don't big think Trump anyone family. Anyone listening was ever on the. Well, I'm from Staten Island. Island. Everybody racist. in Staten Island's like very big on Trump. Really? So I like grow up in like a very conservative world. You live up well. My parents both voted for Brexit, and I, I think part of that was born out of um, no uh, everybody xenophobia, I know loves him. Xenophobia, yeah. Everybody which I is know ironic because my dad married a Romanian, and my mum mm. is a Romanian <laughs> in England, and yet they were like both like, yeah, I gotta keep them foreigners out. I'm like, what are you fucking <laughs> on about? You are the foreigner. You fucked the foreigner. Yeah. No, but when I go home to Staten Idiots. Island, I see a lot of Trump signs. It's weird. Like, really? I feel like you think that someone would just throw a boot through your front door. Like, why would you? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, 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 I'm much more centrist in politics than I was, only because uh, I think this president in particular has brought out the absolute lunacy on both sides. Yeah, it's crazy, and that was always there. 
Yeah. It was just now it's quiet just like or hidden, bubbling. And I hate how many I hate how many people were embarrassing uh, my camp, the left leaning, democratic minded, progressive people. And uh, but obviously it's infinitely as scary to see the fucking you know neo Nazis marching the streets. I mean, look at Charlottesville. It's just like I didn't. I it's scary to think these people live among us, truthfully. Mm. But it's weird. It's a weird time to be alive, and I'm nervous about global warming. I just found out that the they said it's gonna be five, ten years. I have so much I want to do. Well, you think that's when we're gonna die? That's what they said. They said that it's gonna be like five to ten years with global warming. So now I'm biting on my nails. That's not true. It's not. You know, we, we are, Call we are, Bill Nye. Now nah, we're 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 hundreds of 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 the globe like imploding or exploding because of heat from the sun or getting to that place we're, we're actually thousands of years away from that however we're on a, a can I quote that can I quote you on that we're on a 100% guaranteed that will happen and there are ways for us to slow down the effects of we, we might be what we're saying is the sun destroying the earth is thousands of years away but the earth destroying itself or humans destroying the earth prior to that even happening is infinitely more likely and could happen in a matter of hundreds of years if we don't change our patterns but bill nye said five to ten years that was the quote i mean bill nye loves mushrooms he's super bait really yeah bill nye definitely how do you know that (laughs) what the oh my god my childhood wait allegedly first of all I, I want to make on the statement, on the record, and say that I have no idea whether Bill Nye likes hallucinogenic drugs or not. Allegedly. However, I will say that allegedly that motherfucker gets high. Who doesn't from science? The world of science, all scientists, incredible, all the greatest minds of our age, all the greatest musicians of our age, most of the greatest performers of our age have at some point explored the experience of psychedelic drugs because it opens your mind to so many different fucking possibilities that you honestly are closed off to you until, you know, you open that synapse out fully at the back of your brainstem, you know, and you allow that dopamine to flush in, to flood you with possibility, wonder, awe, and excitement about every facet of experience, of the human experience and beyond. God, I sound like a fucking... Bill, if you're listening, call me because I did not see this coming. But God bless him. Bill, if Bill Nye listens to this podcast, Bill... Come on, and we'll take some mushrooms. I'll ask him if he wanted to take some mushies and then do a podcast. Do you like doing mushrooms? What's your favorite drug? Occasionally. Well, I've done lots of different drugs. I I don't really do any of them anymore except smoke weed. Same. I'm pretty bored. And that is my favorite drug because I think it can have really positive effects on a huge number of people. I think think we're designed to enjoy it. I did shrooms one time. I was 18. It was my best friends from high school. And uh, we had the whole house to ourselves. And I'll never forget it. I just ran onto this trampoline and did a triple front flip and landed perfectly on my feet. Like, everybody saw it. I don't know how I would have done that if it wasn't on shrooms. Have you seen the videos where people were saying crack cocaine is a super mutant drug? Because there's all the, basically someone's just <laughs> cut together video clips of crackheads doing the craziest shit. Like there's one where a crackhead jumps off a third story, out of a third story window. Are you calling me a crackhead? Lands <laughs> and runs away. And you're like, what? I did this is one X, time. This is X-Men drugs. <laughs> there's no, like there's just, there's shit where you can just, crackheads are so unaware of how their body feels. They can do the craziest fucking athletic shit. Jeff, I didn't ask you about a crackhead. I asked about me. I'm just saying, if you're going to do I was 17 drug, and adorable. Yeah, I was like Michelle just, Kwan. I'm just saying, you got you, should have, you would have been so proud of me. You and all your gay fans. I like perfectly was like, you have been very it. impressed. You were living it. I was living it. Yeah. Yeah. Like an Olympian. Um, but yeah, mushrooms and, and acid, I still think there's a place in my life for those drugs. Yeah. But in immense moderation and very careful and with the right kind of people and for the right kind of experience. Like, I'd love to try ayahuasca. Yeah, me too. I've heard it's incredibly healing. I'm ready to have that healing. <laughs> You're going to a I'm deep just, place. I'm just not ready to spend the $3,000 to fly to a fucking, you know, um, South American jungle. Yeah. So I can do it properly with a shaman. I haven't got that money yet. <sighs> but if you just fucking go to patreon.com slash savage snowflake listeners and donate $1 each a month, I could go on that holiday in two months. Or plug <gasps> your OnlyFans account. Uh, don't tell everyone about that. And actually, it's my free cams. Actually, that's, Guys, where, that's where my account is. Look out for I it. would. I, I reckon I could make really good money if I was happy, like fingering my butthole on camera. But I just, 
can't do it. I mean, this is a beautiful setup. It's I, a beautiful setup. It's so, it's so ready for black, a Black, red, and brown. Fingering. No. Isn't it ready for a butthole fingering right here? Right. You have everything all set up for it, for sure. You get yourself from two different angles. I'm glad I'm rearranging my arm of my mic and not even thinking about the noise that's going to cause. I'm so sorry. I thought you were getting ready to finger your butthole for the people <laughs> tuning in. I'm rearranging. I'm creating a little room. It's a big butthole. I Needs was going to introduce him, guys. But like, this is the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> This uh, is it. What's your favorite part of being a standout? How does it, what's the best bit for you? Making people happy. I know it sounds like so generic, but it like. It does. That sounds like cheese. Get the fuck out. Get out. No. Get out. Please. And thanks very much to uh, <laughs> Nikki Paris, our guest today. No, Make I sure truly. I mean, there was something that really impacted me like a month ago. That was there was a name? woman. No, there was a woman in the did show. You see what I did there, though. Someone Shut impacted up. me. <laughs> I was talking about compacting. Yeah, I got it. I was trying to have a deep moment with you. Poop in your bum with, because of. Sex, anal sex. We're, we're back to your butthole. Compacting, <laughs> impacting, compact. I, that was the joke. I was. It was gross. It's really gross. But it was very personal. It was very sexual. It was very much, very much driven by, you know, the dialogue of a gay man having sex with another gay man, putting the penis inside of the anus and compacting what was in there. So impacting, compacting. What was his name? That was. Anyway, I <laughs> there was a woman who came up to me at the show who told me. <laughs> I mean, watch, you're, watch how awkward you're going to feel now. She told me that I really needed this laugh. My son just died. And I literally was like, oh, my God, like, that's why. So that's my answer for every time now. Why, like, everyone stand up like, must be so hard. It is so rewarding. Also, she sounds like, I mean, lady, fucking rain it in a bit. But I think that, isn't that special? Like, honestly, yeah, like, but also, like, that's a, a lot of, casino, that's a lot of or fucking a pressure. Anywhere. I think that just like, I like to be, I'm a people person. Uh, I like making people happy. I think I externalized the self-loathing that I have and always decided that if I can do something that makes people fucking happy, um, it makes me feel like I'm more worthwhile. Yeah. I'm more worthwhile person. So I can relate to that and empathize with that completely. But also, I feel invincible on stage. That, I get off on the fucking power yeah, of it. Me too. You know? But I feel like I have a hard time date. Like certain people, I can feel like don't want to date me because I'm, I'm a comedian. Which absolutely really... me. Also, not into men. But if I were into men, I wouldn't. I don't want to date comics ever again. Yeah, I did it. Terrible design. Terrible idea. Did they oh. put you in their act? Sorry. Did you wind up in their act? She tried to ruin my career. The girl in England. Yeah, yeah. She's a horrendous person. But anyway, that's you know another story. But it's like. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be with comics. We're un, very undateable characters. Yeah. Always desperate for validation. Desperate. Um, Late nights, you're never home. Quite overly sensitive in some ways, even though we act like we have no sensitivities or uh, yeah. caustically have no empathy. <sighs> yeah, Those are sociopaths. There's a lot of those. A lot of male comics are those guys, I think. Yeah. And a few females that are just really, I think they're sociopaths. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mocking the world is the only thing that makes them feel good. And they don't connect to people, which is weird. That's a. It's, it's sometimes that's the kind of comedy that's actually most successful. Certainly online, I think. The more you can like pick apart everyone around you, whereas I'm definitely of the school of pick pick apart my own foibles, my own insecurities, highlight them, make jokes out of them. That gives me some control and power over them, and also hopefully makes an audience empathize with who I am and go, I'm a bit like you. I feel that too, and now I like you, and I think you're funny because you tell me the things that I feel you know but i would be too scared to ever say in public yeah yeah but i think i don't know i just feel like i wouldn't want to wind up in somebody's act like i i feel like that's why i could think a lot of people's fear but, but also it's so egotistical am i gonna be in your act how dare you i'm gonna spend my time on stage talking I think, about i you. think normies the normies yeah normies will ask that a lot i get asked that yeah especially like, you if, wish. I, if i did stuff with people in the audience as well during a show if something happened and blah blah, blah and then they'll come out and they'll be like you're like, hey, you're welcome. Hey, you know, hey, you're gonna need me at every show. And I'm like, no, I'm, no, I'm really not. Yeah, just we're good. Go home. Bye. Thank Loving you. you. <laughs> like, thanks very much. Back was, into your Honda Accord. Yeah, it's really goodbye. Fun. Hey, that's a great car. I wish I had a Honda Accord. <sighs> Toyota Corolla, 2001. I have a Chevy Cruze. Uh, it's gonna blow up. Really? It's a hundred thousand miles on it. Hundred and seventy thousand <gasps> on my car. Wow, and it's still going. It's still going. It's All right, that gives me hope then. And I own it. I own it outright. You know. Yeah, well, you're a baller. Three and a half thousand dollars of sweet fucking potential real estate. <laughs> <laughs>
ladies. <laughs> You're tuning in, and, oh, and you need a mop. Shit, baby. <laughs> I got all the skills. I got a fucking car yeah. that's borderline decrepit. And ladies, a very clean and neat and organized apartment. I'm very... My apartment is very neat. I'm actually very... very neat, I'm a very good... Organized, yeah. Conscious cleanliness guy. You Hygiene would, and cleanliness. You would think that somebody's single mother lived here. I am a single mom. It really is impressive. I'm impressed. Delicately raising some sweet buds of marijuana. Yeah. You're a parent. Them. Yeah, I'm a parent. That's a paternal I vacuum a lot. I clean a lot. I wipe things down. I wipe down services. Never never shit on the plates. You know, all the good things. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Have There's a still time. When I meet the right girl. Right. <laughs> oh, baby. I love you so much. I feel like I can even shit on the plates around you. Right. Have you got love? Are you in love? No. Shit. When was the last time you were in love? Yeah, I, it's like so embarrassing. To, I've never, I've never been in love. No, I've okay. actually never had a serious boyfriend. Okay, I have a lot of. That's not um, embarrassing. I'm very touchy. <laughs> what do you mean? And touchy I have a lot feely? of guards up. Yeah, I've like I'm very guarded, and I don't. Oh, trust not touchy feely like tactile. You're touchy in terms of you get. I'm very careful by on who things. I let in, and I have okay. to be honest with you. Most people like I know what I want, and I'm going to be honest with you. I know this may make me sound like an asshole. I very much go on looks. I feel like emotionally, like I don't need somebody for that, but I just want somebody who's really good looking, and that's really all I care about. Wow! And like for right now, I because I know I don't have the time to emotionally commit to somebody. Is that now? Hang on a sec. But are you open to that concept? Because often when we're not looking for things, that's when the things come into. Like I was, yeah. I was very, I think, consciously wanting to be in a relationship with someone for a while in the last couple of years because um, I'd done time on my own. I'd done time on my own. I was ready for a mature relationship. And I was looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. And as soon as I deleted all the fucking apps and just gave up and went, fuck this, it's awful, dating sucks and all that, I meet a girl and we reconnect and it's like, oh, wow, shit, yeah, this is great. You know, it was the right time. So maybe it's just not There's the right time. There's one guy I see like on and off. He's like the only person that I've Sweet had Sweet dick. Sweet dick? Here. We've actually never slept together. Oh, I won't sleep with him, but um, he's very rough. Which like to the point that like it, like it bothers me. Like he was like, if we're together, I'm gonna like spank you every day. I was like, I'm gonna spank you with a with a belt with a knife. Like you're not hitting me. He might like, be he into wants that. like pull my hair. Like I'm just like not into stuff like you that. Like do I'm from New York. I'll, to be I'll break your neck. Like wow. don't pull my hair. Don't touch me. So like it's out of step. Like is it wrong that I'm a little aroused? Right he's now? a he's very just like he's <laughs> he's like the CEO of a company. He's very powerful. But like oh. I also like have my own thing too. So if you think that I'm like. Two, there's you met your match is what I tell him, but I do like him. I just there's a power struggle. I just feel like I hit me. I'm gonna hit you. That's so like I don't know demoralizing. He this, drives I mean, me crazy. I get worked up talking about niche it. Definitely pornography. You know what I mean? Like hundred percent. I get fired just beautiful up just talking gay men just slapping each other. But it'd be like an art house film, like some some kind of lo-fi German music playing as you slap and then slap and slap and slap and you just stand there and then. There's just and there's just Britney playing quietly on a, <laughs> on a gramophone yeah. from vinyl, and then she yawns. Baby, <laughs> baby, one more time. But it's like crackly, like an old recording of it. I just feel like the gay men out here. There's just too much of like a. I feel like you have to have sex every single day. You have to just yes! have too much. Could you have sex every day? Um, I I mean at the moment I am pretty much wow. But I uh, do I. Which enjoy hand? the occasional day hey the occasional day off yeah i quite like days where i don't have sex sometimes yeah this guy's like we have to have sex every i'm 35 day. Like, like i'm 35 like i really enjoy sex and i really enjoy sexual adventure adventures yeah but i also enjoy equally as much just the occasional day off where i go like hey, it's nice just i'm, I'm gonna, gonna sit this one out <laughs> and asleep yeah yeah that's all right now um but i mean the gay men in i, I go to hollywood um gold's gym and it's like 95 percent gay powerful gay men yeah it's hard to be a gay man in this city it's hard enough to be a straight dude like for in terms of what you have to have physicality wise i can't even imagine how difficult it is today without abs as a gay man in this city yeah and i think that's also too it's just like everybody's disposable to everybody out here yeah like i don't like that feeling what do you want from me but then again you've just outlined that what you would really want from a partner right now is just kind of beauty and sex it wouldn't be an investing you know you said you don't like letting people in yeah. and that you find it hard to show the vulnerabilities. But I f have found personally, just on my personal basis, by embracing my vulnerabilities and being quite publicly, you know, uh, vocal about them, 
that's what's brought me some really good fucking friends out in, in the city. Because people go, oh shit, I feel like that too, but no one ever fucking says it. Yeah. Thanks, man. I can talk about it. You know, and that's, that can form a really deep connection with someone in yeah. a friendship. So yeah. maybe you need to be a little more vulnerable. If I you do need to be a little bit. I need to let my guard down. Dick. I know. I need to fuck, buddy. Sweet dick. Sorry. It's okay. I, I love <laughs> the way you commit to it. I don't want to interrupt you. I just see it in your eyes that you really. Sweet dick. Yeah. I could see it just invigorate just you. Just fucking like a corn on the cob. Just throw it in there. <laughs> Roll it in some of that fucking salt. Yeah. The chili salt. And yeah. The, what do they sell? Like oh, Parmesan cheese. Fares. Butter. Right. And then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweet dick. Well, I wish now I, I know what I'm doing tonight. Man, I wish I was bi. I wish I was get bi. Some on the cob. Do you? Yeah, would you would you wish to be bi or straight if you could change your sexuality? Um, I don't think that I could ever not be gay because there's so many loopholes growing up. I think there's just so many things I could do whatever I wanted in high school. I was just like, I'm wearing a boa. They're like, do it, don't go to school. Today. So you we had a, that sounds like you had a really lucky. I did. Situation. I had a really did lucky. I was like, I bet there's a lot of guys in the deep south who are like, if they could have chosen to be born straight, they probably would have taken that up just because for ease of life and. No, I mean, my parents definitely had a hard time because I, I come from a very Catholic, Republican family. Right, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I am who I am and I'm a lot of fun. So you're missing out. Yeah. You know, sometimes I look nice in the right lighting and sometimes I'm a lot of fun to be around and I'm fun to smoke weed with, I think. Yeah. And fucking <laughs> play with dicks. Yeah, right. In I'm, that order. There's something regressed about me. Like, it's something sexual. I can I see you being bi. Nah, but I don't. I've, I'm, I'm so open to it over the course of my life that I've like, made out with a very attractive dude and I just I felt the mild physical repulsion of someone not into this experience and it yeah. felt forced and yeah. therefore un, you know a turn off that's how I feel too about men but, that's, <laughs> but you know what I mean though there's a lot yeah. of that, that that's what you know I guess gay men would feel when they when they kiss a woman they'd be like oh, no, I made so. out with a lot of girls you did and I liked it were you ever intimate with them as well like physically intimate no or? I've never seen or touched a vagina okay I'm afraid to. But you had relationships with them. Yeah, I was younger. dating a girl in middle school and her dad we went on a date and her dad got me um a Kareem Abdul Jabbar um action figure for my birthday and I was like, What type of Barbie is this? So it was like I'm not into this. And then we just went to the movies and then like she was waiting for me to kiss her and I just gave her a hug and I said, Bye bitch, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye bitch. Yeah, it was kinda like Love that. Your outfit. See you later. Oh my god, you're so skinny. Bitch. Bye, bitch. Right, yeah. But then actually once I came Kissed out. Kissed her dad. I, I full on the lips. There was one night I hooked up with like six girls at this house party. And I did, like made out. She's never made out with somebody before. She was not an attractive girl. But I did that because I'm a humanitarian. <laughs> so you wanted that, to give her a little experience. I did. I gave her my sweet velvet tongue. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm a hero. You are a giver. I wrote it out off of my taxes that year. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put it down there. You I'm were like, I person. was a bottom for all these girls. Yeah. Yeah, just let them get in there. But there's a tender kiss to a girl that, like, I just felt, you know, I, it wasn't even like a guy kiss. Women are girl. so easy to find. I look like a young lesbian. Attractive, whether you're whether you're sexually attracted to them physically or not, they're so beautiful to behold. Yeah, it's women's true. bodies. It's so true. And you know what, dude? There, there's dudes in the fucking gym in the Gold's gym I go to that are, you know, like incredible peak physical condition, and their bodies look impressive, but never like. To me, I mean, uh, of course, fair enough, I'm straight, but also they're not sensual. They don't feel sensual. They just feel like animalistically yeah. cool. Yeah. So I want to be like that ripped that I look like animalistically cool, but I know I'm never going to have the sensual desire that a woman's body has. But when you look like that much, it's just like you're that big. Like I always look at them like, have they ever tasted a Whopper? You're never. <laughs> like they, they're, I mean, they sound like miserable to be oh, around. Bro, now you're just you gonna eat your want grains and oats. After this podcast, I'm going to drive to Wendy's and get a chicken burger. Oh, yeah. The spicy, chi uh, spicy, spicy chicken, chicken burger yeah. is fucking awesome. Yeah. Man. I know. I love, I love Wendy's. I'm going, to get, I'm going to be a fat bitch. I'm going to come home and eat it. He's going to take Wendy by the pigtails. Jerk off onto my own stomach and just leave it in the belly button. Let it just sit there until it, you know, it all goes clear. Isn't that amazing that when yeah. the sperm is alive and moving around it, it's more milky. But if you just leave that shit, it just fucking goes more clear. Isn't that crazy? Come changes with time. <laughs> I mean, with nine months, it can change from come into a baby. And that OnlyFans link is that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty kind of. 
I mean, that's what a belly I like button. Porn. I, after a certain age, that's what a belly button is for. Lazy cum Ew, receptacle. So do you just have a jacuzzi of lint and crusty? I'm pretty semen certain. And I'm pretty belly- certain every man who's listened to this podcast who is over the age of fucking twenty four has at some point used their belly button as a cum receptacle. You should and do a sort belly of button sat challenge. There for a bit where it's there, the belly button the challenge. Belly button ch- challenge. What would that entail? This all these men just send the picture of their belly buttons and we can examine. Oh them. no, I'm all right. No, you can. Uh, you can send the, it you, to the panel at the Savage are, League at Gmail. No, no, you are you are definitely the leader of that challenge, yeah. and all all submissions should be directed towards you. Jeff's I do not number want... is nine zero eight. I specifically don't want anyone to send me pictures of cum in their fucking belly button. You're fun to torture. Yeah, a no. little bit. It, it is. It's a lot. No, of because fun. you jest and you think this is humorous but then what you don't know is that i have some listeners that would do that yeah <laughs> and they'd be like he said it before i got he here he said it so i did it it was really weird because i got here and i sat at the table and jeff was like i really want to see what my listeners like belly buttons look like yeah and i was like that's you should totally well, ask I mean, them I've, the I've seen some beautiful belly buttons me too a belly button i love it nice- very defining of a woman's yeah you know like just her her lines and her shapes and her yeah. shape. i like belly buttons too a nice one. Yeah. But you don't want to sniff them. They look like tight. Belly buttons oh, never smell good, no, do they? No. I don't know if I've ever sn- sniffed one. Never got in there? No. Is don't that something it. I should don't be checking it. for? Oh, it's like no. the back of ears. Don't sniff a back of an ear. Ooh. You never know what day you're going to get. I mean, sure, if she washed her hair the day before, great. Yeah. But some girls don't wash their hair for days. I know. That's I wash my hair every day. Animals. Aren't they animals? I know. That's so skeevy. Fuck it. I'm gay. Let's do it. Let's go. Just men with incredible hygiene. That's all I need. No, but that's true. Women can get away with it. They just don't wash their hair for fucking days. They go, it takes out the natural oils. I can't. It takes too long. It's like, it smells like goose shit. Although, actually, though, I'm dating a woman of color, and they physically cannot wash their hair every day. Yeah, that's because a Because if they situation. do, it will mean four hours in the fucking yeah. bathroom every morning. Like, it's a lot of upkeep. I seriously have so much respect for African-American women. Yeah. I could barely brush my teeth in the morning sometimes. Like, I don't have the energy. African-American women are... They are like, like they've gone through some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like on in in lots of different ways at the hands of like, I'm. This is not. This is not. This is not the woke podcast. But let me say, there's something mildly fucking just impressive off the bat when you meet a black woman. You go like, all right, well, you've gone through a lot of shit from Western white culture and a lot of shit from your own fucking culture as well. You know, like the, the the power struggle within within black communities and how women can be treated, like they're 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 kind of born fucking survivors in, in a lot of ways. Um, that's black why I'm magic. Ve- I'm very attracted. I mean, like my my girl is you know Puerto Rican and Jamaican, and I think there's a big part of me as I get older, I respect and I find attractive different qualities in people. Of course, and survival. Yeah. is a quality that maybe it's because I'm 35 and I'm a little bit worried about the state of the fucking world. And there's a part of me that goes, it's thinking about families and futures. And I want to lay down foundations with a woman who's strong. Yeah. That's really attractive to me. And I'm attracted to perseverance too. Like anybody who takes their odds and finds a way to like outwit and outthink. Yeah. And out deliver. Plus like also on a very shallow base as well. I feel like <laughs> Latin women and black women just move a little differently in they bed. Do. They as do. a gross generalization yeah don't get me wrong white girls i'm not hating on you some of you got some fucking hips on you and you know how to roll them around i'm just saying most white girls are not <laughs> great answers. i'm just saying becky it's not always <laughs> it's his right so <laughs> just you know move a little stop doing the box stuff yeah and Switch i get it, it up. they used to like having sex with dudes that they wish they were dead so they just like lay there like they are dead yeah but baby, come on. You got to move your fucking hips a little bit. I know. A lot of people just lay there. Just lay there. What do you do when someone just lays there? <laughs> no, that's never happened. I've never had someone just lay there. Really? Really? I've had like poor sexual partners. People who were like <laughs> working class. No. Poor <laughs> sexually devoid yeah. partners. But then they didn't just lay there. You know, they just try and it'd be awkward and you can't find any kind of rhythm and they don't really know what they're doing and, you know, like any stimulation of me feels awful and when I'm trying to stimulate them they are kind of confused about oh no yeah oh yeah and you're like oh, fucking Jesus Christ you know what I mean it's like when you kiss someone but you I think you know that when you kiss someone yeah it's when you true. French kiss There's someone a correlation. you already know if they're going to be good in bed or not for the most part 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you could vibe it out. Yeah. And there's like you the kiss someone, rhythm they of tongue. To, yeah. They just they just nibble a little bit on the bottom lip and there's a little bit of tongue, but then it's like quite most, you know, yeah. more not closed too much mouth. Tongue, but yeah, not just too the right amount, a little, maybe a little soft Ugh. little kiss just here, just a little little one there before going, you know some shit's going to happen. That's going to be sexual. There's nothing But if someone worse. goes in and they're like, blah, 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 blah. That is literally, I've been in that situation and really? I, I've actually asked, I said, could you please keep your tongue out of my mouth? And they said, yes. But you still fucked him or had some kind of sexual. Yeah, you bet You bet your ass. I, you so, bet, yeah. I bet your ass. Yeah, you're, you bet the right ass. <laughs> no, I just have a lot of rules in the bedroom. It's really weird. I don't know what happened to me. Like, I don't I ever pull my hair. Don't ever, like, be rough. There's well, you, definitely a, a rule. A I mean, rule maybe you were, like, assaulted. Maybe it's bringing back a bad memory. No. <laughs> and I don't mean sexual sort of nice Maybe life. someone once in a fight when you were a kid, you had your hair pulled. Ooh. And you fucking just hate that feeling. Yeah. There's shit I don't like. I there's things and there's things I won't do to a woman. Like um like the more extreme like a lot of women have like said, this thing. I, I I I was very prolifically promiscuous when I was younger. Okay. So the partners I've I've had about 7 maybe 7 or 800 women nice. that I've slept with. Wow. But out of those girls quite a large not a large number but a, a decent enough proportion that I can think back over lots of women saying that to me have had like rape fantasies or things like that yeah and that's I, a thing I had yeah no idea. yeah and i just go like that's where i can't do it i can't do that because i had a friend that i found that was into that i was just, i just I, I was like i wish i never knew i mean look back then it was because i just felt uncomfortable doing it i didn't want to yeah. do something that i felt sexually uncomfortable doing like yeah. why would i and i don't want to do that with someone but now even now more so it's like jesus christ fucking in you, 2019 i'm all right thank you very much yeah i want to what do the thing that could potentially make you Make up some horrendous story right. about me. No, Where's the right. tape recorder? There's crazy people in the world, and oh. I, I'm not going to give any of them a fucking yeah, opportunity. Undeniably to... so. Undeniably so. But you know, if a chick wants me to like choke her or smack her bum or you know put her on a leash, I'll do that shit on a leash. Yeah, really. You kind of just have to be trustworthy enough to maybe even get some. And I think it's okay in modern age. And by the way, any of my younger male listeners, perhaps who, I mean, you're more at risk of getting in trouble because you're unfortunately young men are kind of the guys who generally tend to do things that overstep a sexual boundary. I think there's no fucking shame in 2019 if you and your partner, you and your girlfriend want to do something really um, uh, more seriously, something a little bit more on the on the kink side sexually, have written confirmation for each other. Make a little video with each other just saying like, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so and this is my girlfriend and we're going to do this and, and you know, you're consent- consenting. And then you can just enjoy the experience and have fun with it without worrying that somewhere down the line that yeah. could fucking... And I know that's really awful that you have to almost do like a little verbal contract beforehand. But yeah, do that. No, definitely do, do that. that. <laughs> definitely, definitely do that. Yeah. Because you never and know. And then throat fuck the shit out of each other. And just get it fucking on. Fucking right. let, yeah, let ram, ram it out. her elbow inside right. your asshole. Scream, moan, cry. All of the above. Set your pubes on fire yeah. and have her smother your face until you almost pass out from asphyxiation. And then get gasoline. Oh! If you're into, if you're into it hot like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get sued. Someone's going to sue us. They're going to go, I did everything you said <laughs> and I still landed myself in prison. What's the bail? Please help. What's the bail? Exactly. <laughs> Guarantee we haven't got the money yet. Okay. Comics? Or maybe you're wealthy. Are you wealthy? Um, No. Nah, me neither. Yeah. I'm okay with money. I definitely. I'm trying to save. I spent a lot. Of I money. spend a lot of money too. I made Ooh, a. I made I'm dangerous. I made a few hundred thousand uh, pounds in the UK, and so that would have been like you know could be maybe a, a million out here, and then I not a million. I think almost. A, anyway, I spent a lot on dumb shit. What's your vice? Oh, back then it was like dating and on having gross? crazy shit. Yeah, having crazy expensive experiences, and then also. You know, a lot of drinking and drug taking. Yeah. Spent a lot of money on coke and champagne. You're like such a rock star. Not anymore. You're nah, still a rock star to us. Thanks. Cue. To all of you tuning in. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, internet. Um, we love you. Good night. We're almost at the end yeah. of the podcast. We've got wow. like a minute and five seconds. We could finish it right on the time. But Ooh. let's not do that. Let's like let's dice with death a little bit. Okay. Um, but I want people to know how they can find out about your comedy before we do that. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nikki yes. Paris Bitch. Wait, I'm already so predictable. Really? Nikki Paris 
bitch. Yeah, that's my birth name. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm honoring what the Catholics gave me. Okay, fair. I like it. Yeah. Um, and that's on Instagram and, and Twitter. Is Instagram there a website Twitter? for live shows as well? I know you probably don't Paris. know. NikkiParis.com. NikkiParis.com. N-I-C-K-Y. Y. Yeah. Not I. Not I. Like, he's not Nick E. He's, a, he's like, Nick, hey, yeah. Nicky. Yeah, exactly. Fucking Nicky yeah. Paris. Hey. That's right. Bitch. Like that fucking Jewish shit. <laughs> there you go. Right. And then just the bitch that um, just comes in. And in. Uh, performances coming up. In- yeah, I'm opening for Suzanne Westenhofer in Oregon on June 7th um, in Oregon. Awesome. This will definitely um, be out before I'm then. headlining Caroline's on October 29th in New York City. Nice. Um, and I have a podcast coming out at... Can I plug other podcasts? Of At course the you can. Comedy yeah, yeah, Store yeah. with Dean McDermott and Adam Hunter, and the first episode is going to premiere on People Magazine. Haven't you just had some incredible acts on there already? I'm yeah, people on there. Tori Spelling, Perez Hilton, Jay Moore. Nice. Yeah, so it's been really exciting. We haven't launched yet, but People Magazine is premiering it on June tenth. Amazing. What's it called? Daddy Issues. Daddy Issues from the Comedy Store. Yeah, and with Nikki Paris and Adam Hunter. Make sure and you Dean listen to that as well. And yeah, Dean. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're following him on social media, I'm sure you'll, you'll be plugging all of that. Yeah. I haven't officially announced it yet. I have to wait till people And then see it. also keep your eyes peeled <laughs> later on in the year because it could be some excitement. Yeah. Some excitement about potential show. But yeah. you don't want to talk about it because of I can't NDAs. talk about it yet. But I, yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't, yeah. I just, I don't know what you're talking about. I hope in six months' time people will look back and go, oh, wow, remember we watched the episode with Nikki Paris? Yeah. He's fucking blown up. Huge. It's going to happen. Love, love you, Nikki you. Paris. I love you, Jeff. Um, let's go smoke a blunt and talk about Britney. Okay. And... Uh, I just burped. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye, guys.